Hello from OpenVPN. In this video, I will launch one of our OpenVPN access server BYOL AMIs in Amazon Web Services. BYOL stands for Bring Your Own License, and I'll explain that more as we go. So I've logged into an AWS account here, and I'm on the EC2 dashboard. To get started, I will go to Launch Instance, and then into the Marketplace, and if I search OpenVPN, all of our AMIs will appear. This top result, this is our BYOL image. Below that is our tiered images. Now, these differ in the way that the tiered images have connections already attached. They require no licensing whatsoever, so you don't have to travel to our site and purchase a license and then activate that license. All you have to do is launch the AMI and you have immediate connections available for your clients or for your users. So these can be very advantageous for, um, for companies that have nimble networks that, are, that have configuration enabled and are often terminating instances and launching new ones all the time. So for this demo, I'll select the BYOL image and get started. You see in the pricing details, this is the BYOL. And for this, I just need a micro. This is a demo. And for the details, these look good. The VPC is fine. I will auto assign a public IP. You may want to disable this and then associate an address later. For a VPN, of course, a public IP address is necessary. Storage is fine. I'll give this a quick name tag just because I can't, uh, I can't allow myself to not do that. OK, security groups. Now, AWS Marketplace will go ahead and create a security group for you that will get you started. In this one, as you can see, it's been created by the Marketplace. In this one, SSH is enabled and it's wide open. 943, that is um, the port that all web services run on. So the admin UI will run on 943 along with the client web service. And 443 and 1194, those are the standard default uh, VPN ports for OpenVPN. 945 is automatically open. This is a newer feature. As of version 2.7.2, .2, clustering is enabled on Access Server. And 945 is the control channel for clustering. I'll go ahead and stick with that for now and launch the instance. Select my key. And there we go. This normally doesn't take too long. There it is. I'll click on the instance ID to get to the console here. And it's pending. While it's spinning up, I'll go ahead and copy the public IP address. That's the first thing we'll need to do is SSH in. And wait for it to turn green. And there we go, it's running. Now I'll head over to a terminal and SSH in using the OpenVPN AS user that is part of the AMI. I will allow the connection and immediately the configuration wizard should pop up. And there it is. I need to agree to the licensing agreement. This is our primary access server. The default options are going to be good for the wizard for the most part. Also, you can always change these configuration options in the admin UI. Do I wish to log into the admin UI as the OpenVPN user? Yes, I do. I'll go over that. And I don't have a license key at this time, but we'll, I'll show you how to uh, purchase one. And that's all the questions. The configuration is occurring now. And at the end, we should get URLs for the admin UI and the client web service. And there they are. There's our admin UI URL. I'll copy that so I have it for later. Now, I'm still logged in as the OpenVPN AS user. I'm going to go ahead and get root access. 
as root, I can change the password for OpenVPN. I'll create a quick password, and that will allow me to log into the web service immediately. Okay, that's all we need to do in the terminal at this point. So I'll go over to another web browser and paste in that URL that I just copied. Now we'll always get a certificate error here because this is a self-signed certificate. That's how the AMI ships. Enter the credentials I just created. And then agree to the EULA. And that's it. We're into the admin UI. The server is currently on and this access server is ready to accept connections. If I go over to VPN settings under configuration, I can show you a couple of useful options. One with this AMI is it picks up the subnet that it's currently on within the VPC. So this is the default subnet. So it's automatically ready to become a gateway for other resources in that VPC. You could easily use this access server with minimal configuration to allow connected users access to VPN uh, to AWS resources, excuse me. To do that, we look at the network address. This is a default subnet. It can be changed, but as of now, connected users will receive an IP address from within this subnet. So you could lock down the security group for SSH to only allow SSHing from this subnet, and then only connected users would be able to do that. Simple use case. Head back over to the status overview page. And you see that the license status is two devices, meaning only two connections can take place currently. That is the default for a BYO access server. To have more connections available, I can go over to the openvpn.net site. And under business VPN, in the right hand column, purchase license. Oh, and I need, to, I need to be logged in to do that, which is no problem. I've logged in here before. And then back to purchase license. And this is the purchasing license page. It's pretty straightforward. We accept most major forms of payment. And uh, the license terms are per year and per device. Once you've purchased your license, you'll receive a license key number. And then all you have to do to activate that is under configuration, go to license, and then paste this key right in here and click add a new license key and you will be ready for however many connections you have purchased. That's about it for this video.